Well, next up is Paul Seal, developer at Moriyama, and he's sharing a few of his favorite things. So give him a big round of applause. Paul? Thank you. First of all, can everybody hear me? Brilliant. Um, and next, I've been told to tell you that if you have any questions, please um, submit them in the app. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be asked some horrible questions. So, yeah. Um, so this talk then, what is it? It's called Umbraco Packages. These are a few of my favorite things. I was inspired by Mark Goodson to have a musical themed uh, title. So that's why I went with that one. Um, first of all, then, who am I? I'm Paul Seal. Um, I'm an Umbraco certified master. I recently did the exam um, based on the V9 and, and above. So for the next two years, I'm certified anyway. Um, I'm, from yesterday, I'm now a five times Umbraco MVP, which I'm really honored to be. Thank you. And also, I'm a YouTuber. So <laughs> I just record some videos and put them out on YouTube. Um, I work for Moriyama. We're Umbraco Gold Partners. We also contribute in Gold Partners as well meaning that we do work to contribute back to the Umbraco source code and the package ecosystem and things like that. And we're also Umbraco and Azure specialists. So about this talk then. Firstly, it's about packages. These are packages that I wanted to share, my favorite ones, that work with Umbraco 9 and above. Although all of these packages are running on Umbraco 9, they may work on Umbraco 10, but as it only got released today, I didn't want to risk it, so I'm just, they're all on Umbraco 9 latest almost, but yeah, just bear that in mind. They probably will work on Umbraco 10 when the package creators publish their working versions. And the main thing for these packages is about the problems that they solve. So I've tried to, these are my favorite packages. I'm giving you reasons why they're my favorite and what sort of problems they solve. And with that, I'm giving you some use cases. So these use cases you might have thought of before, or you might not have. You, maybe you've used the package before, but you've not used it in this way before. So hopefully it'll be interesting, even if you've seen all of these packages before. But in doing this, um, I needed to, when reviewing all these packages in uh, .NET and Umbraco 9, I wanted to be able to install packages quickly and test them out. And you might want to install Umbraco 10 and test it out quickly. So um, what I've done is I've created a tool which gives you the code that you can paste into the command line. So you don't need to remember all of what it is when you like .NET, new I, and Umbraco templates. You don't need to remember any of that. You can just go to this website. If you scan the QR code, hopefully it works. Give us a thumbs up if anyone did it and it worked. Hey. Um, yeah, go to the website, and you'll be able to search for packages. So it's all based around Umbraco, even though it could be generic.net. Oh, no, we've got a bit of a crisis going on here. <laughs> they said I'd bring the house down. <laughs> when that happened at dinner, I didn't realize it was a rehearsal for it. <laughs> right, OK. Hopefully, someone's going to hold it. <laughs> right. Everybody safe? No one got a head injury? Brilliant. OK, then. So what you can do is you can search for Umbraco packages. Don't worry, I'm going to do a quick demo of it. By the way, I've got 10 more demos after this. So a bit like Callum's, it's going to be quick fire. Might run out of time, especially with that happening. Um, you can configure your options as well. So you can do things like. Um, you probably can't read it, but you can choose whether, what database type you want. So by default, it's SQLite. You can choose, uh, the, you can even do the unattended install, so it will create it all for you. I'll show you. It'd be better if I show you. But yeah, have a play with this. And then you just copy and paste the script into the terminal, and it will install it with the packages that you selected. So, oh, a bit more about this, even though, anyway, you bookmark your favorite script so you can. Edit it and uh, save the, it will update the script for you. And then the idea is if you want to save these scripts and come back to them, maybe you've got a favorite script that you run when you test out packages or whatever, you can just bookmark it. And so use your bookmarks and it uses the query string. So when it hits the page with that query string, with those query string values, 
it will load it all back up for you. So, demo time. Let us pray. Um, so, we're just going to switch to my machine. Just going to switch to my machine. Hey. So, yeah, I've loaded up psw.codeshare.co.uk. We'll go to the options, and I'm just going to uh, choose the clean starter kit. And I'm going to call my solution CG22 and my project name CG22.site, because I like that idea. Um, and it's automatically updating the script for you there. So you can go back to install script, copy this, and I'm going to try and hurry up here. So this is one that I tested out earlier. <laughs> right, so if we just open a folder in the terminal, all I've done is I've gone to the site, I've chosen my options. I could even add a package or two if I wanted to, but it's, I'm going to do Umbraco 10, so I'd rather not, uh, just in case that package blows up. So update the script, copy the script, and paste it into the terminal, and then hopefully, while I waffle away, this will install Umbraco 10, um, which was released this morning. The, the full version of Umbraco 10 was released on NuGet. So if you want to test it out, then you can have a quick way to get started up with this. So it's doing the unattended install as well, so it will create the SQLite database for you, meaning that you could do this on your Mac, uh, your Linux, or your uh, Windows machine, or as Tom Madden did, he did it on his uh, Steam thing that he's got. <laughs> Steam Deck. Anyway, so this looks like it's got a load of errors, but it's OK, because now the text is there, and it's installed the package. If I just click on this, so what's really good is I didn't need to know anything. I just used the user interface on the website, and then I just go into here, let the, actually let the page load. There we are. We've got an Umbraco 10 site, my first one uh, in the full Umbraco 10. I don't need to show you any more. So shall we go back to the slides? So first one is usync complete or usync. Um, yeah, usync all the things um, by Kevin Jump. And the reason I'm including this on this, I'm mainly doing about free packages or packages that have like a free starter tier, you know, things like that. Uh, but Everyone's probably already seen Usync and maybe Usync Complete. What is it? It's version control for your database, basically, to sum it up. Um, you can use it for publishing content and settings and media and all sorts of things like that. And uh, it's got an, an exporter as well, so you can, like, expo you can pick certain things to put into a pack, and then you can deploy that out onto your site. It's a really good deployment tool, and there's more. So how to install Usync. So if you wanted the script, you could just copy this. But yeah, I use this script to install Usync Complete. And I use to Usync Complete when I'm working on any brand new project, because the client might not want to buy it. But if you start off with it, it really helps you as a developer. And you can deploy between environments and everything. It's really good for starting out. And then if the client doesn't want to pay the fee for it, then you, know, you just revert back to just using the free version anyway. So that's what I always do. Demo time, let us pray. Right, so one thing I wanted to show you is that we've got, I've got a V8 site. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but basically um, you can have a V8 Umbraco site. Uh, if you switch back to my machine, thank you. So I've got a V8 site here and I want to Instead of running through a migration and all of that lot, I just actually want to take everything that was on my V8 site and install it onto my V10 site or on this demo, a V9 site. So I've installed Usync. Just to prove this is a V8 site here. I've installed Usync. And what, you can, what, what happens when you've got the um, code for that, when you've generated your Usync files, just got to navigate through. Uh, if we go to Usync Complete, go to the folder for the V8 site we can copy the usync files, this V8 folder here. We can copy that, and we can create a, a clean install of a V9 site, which is what I've got in here. This is one I made earlier. Um, and then I'll just delete that, because I have tested it out. If I paste that in there and then rename this folder to be V9, that's all I need to do. 
I don't know if you can see this, but all I'm doing is a V and a 9. Then what I can do is I can run this site now, this V9 site, open up a terminal, and type .NET new podcast. Oh, no, sorry, that's Jamie's show. Uh, .NET, um, I'll just do the up. I can't be bothered to type. .NET run my project. There we go. So this is going to run my empty V9 site that I just created um, earlier. So when it runs this site, it will have no content, no settings, or anything, but it will uh, use the seed thing that, that Kevin's created. No, is it the seed? or the, You'll see it when it loads up the page anyway. But basically, it knows that you've got usync files, but it also knows that you don't have content. So it says, do you want to import all this uh, content and settings? So if we do this, this would be good if you've got a package and people want to test, you know, like contribute towards it and things like that. So we've got it open in a browser. I'm going to have to be quick on my rest. Yeah, see, you think all the things. You'll see in this page, because your site doesn't contain any published content, open on Braco. Oh, oh, no. Go back, go back. Import local using file, so you can actually um, pull all of these in. So you just put the login details, and this is now going to run the usync on this site for us. And hopefully, it's done it all. I don't know if it has. Oh, it just takes you to this. So I'm just going to say, import everything. Remember, I took it from a V8 site, and I'm on a V9 site, or you could be on a V10 site. If I just import everything, that hopefully will then give us what we had on our V8 site, just to prove it. V8 site has logged me out. That doesn't prove anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. All right. So, yeah, this, is, this came from the V8 site. So then if I go onto my V9 site, it's going to take ages, isn't it? But here it is. It's running those. Maybe we skip past this. But that's the general idea. Oh, it's done it. Go to content. It's not going to do it. Is it going to do it? No. So thank you, demo gods. Right, next one then. So we'll cancel on that one. Uh, but that's the idea. Test it out yourselves. It should work for you. It, don't do it when you're on stage. Um, what's the next one then? Back to the slides. So the next one is Skybird Redirects. This is one of my favorite packages. And this one is also an award-winning package. Um, what can you do with Skybird Redirects? It's used for redirect management. You know, say a page uh, has moved and or doesn't exist anymore. You want to put your redirects in. You can do that. You c it's got a dashboard as well to control these redirects, and it's also got a content app to control them as well. So, in you could have a page, and you could see all the redirects that redirect to this page. So, and there's more. But this is the script that I used to um, install this, and. It's demo time again. Come on, do me a favor on this one. So on this one, I tried to give some more interesting um, ideas on this one that you might not have used before with Skybird redirects. So if I open this in the terminal and I do .NET run my project, hopefully it runs quickly. It's already installed and everything. So if we click on this, go to the back office for it. So the first example is um, I'm going to unpublish a product page. And when I unpublish my product page, if I go to visit that page, it will be page not found. So let's do that. Let's get a product page. Uh, let's do the biker. I'll do the banjo. It's easier to spell later. Do unpublish. Yeah, unpublish. Thank you very much. Right, so now if I did try and go to it, it it's not published, so it's going to fail. Um, so I just want to go to products and then just search for, uh, type in Banjo in the URL, and you'll see that it doesn't work. Page not found. So what we can do is we can use Skybird Redirects, which is on the Content tab. Go to Redirects. We can add a new redirect, and we can just put the URL that it was. It was in Products, and then Banjo. And where do we want it to go? Well, actually, I've created something earlier again. And um, that was a no longer found. But I, I've also got a, another page that I didn't create. So we'll go back. If we go back and just choose no longer available, add. Now when we try and visit that page, we've got a 
tailored uh, product page that we can say this product is no longer available. You can add your own content to, you know, that sort of thing. That's one demo. Um, I can show you on this page as well, the Banjo page that still existed, but it's unpublished. Um, actually, this no longer available. The redirects are in a content app here, so that's quite handy to see what pages are redirecting to this via that. And then on the, there's an About Us section, and if we go into this and have a look, I've got a business report. Now, um, so there's corporate reports and all sorts of things. This business report link points to a PDF, and this is V1 of this report. If I click on that, it'll open the report, important report V1. But what if I want to change that link? What if I link to that all over the site? That's pretty annoying. Uh, but what you can do is you can create a redirect. So let's just add, go to here, redirects. I'm going to add a new redirect for a media item. So I'm just going to call it reports 2022. And the destination that I'm going to put is the V2 version of my of media item. So I can tell it to go to documents and the V2 one. Submit that, add. So now in my content page, if I just update the link, instead of pointing directly to the media item, I can just put, make this, um, I'm just going to cheat and just delete it. There we go, business report. And then make that into a link. I can just do slash uh, reports and then 2022. And then it doesn't matter how many versions it goes through or the different DLLs, uh, different um, URLs, and you don't have to replace the individual file, keep the same name, all of that. I can now, um, whenever I visit that URL, if I read the wrong one, go on to here. If I click on this, which is going to reports 2022, that will still open the PDF and it will go to V2. So if I had other versions in the future, I can just use the redirects to make that. And you can do that for images as well. So you, maybe you'd have like header image and footer image and things that, or site logo, just another way of using the uh, package. All right, moving on, because we're running out of time. I feel like I'm running in a race. Uh, what's the next one? Let's switch back to the slides. Diplo God Mode, I'm going to uh, just tell you about this one and not demo it. Basically, Diplo God Mode has got a usage browser. It's basically a developer's tool. It's um, called God Mode because it gives you access to all sorts of things. One use case that I can think of is if you were to, um, you need to re like streamline your site, and maybe use some, uh, re reduce the amount of data types that you have in there and document types. It tells you if they are being used anywhere in the site. It tells you where, what document type has content and all of those sorts of things. You've got utilities for such as uh, clearing the caches, warming up templates and everything. It's a really good package. So if you want to install that, you can do that. Or you can search on the package script writer. Let's move on. The dashboard. This one is a staple for everyone, I think. Um, if you've not used it, you should. And I'll show you the dashboard quickly, because that's a quick demo. Open with a terminal. So the good thing about the dashboard is um, you can see it first. Instead of the Umbraco Welcome dashboard, you can actually see this one. And there's a bit of code in the solution here that I can show you that shows you how to, wrong, wrong, wrong one. It shows you how to actually just turn off the uh, default dashboard. So if you didn't know how to turn off the default dashboard, there's a little snippet of code in here for you when this loads. But let's go to the site, because it should have loaded up by now. Uh, here we go. So what I like about this, it gives you relevant information. It gives you information about what nodes have been published and edited and things like that. You can link to them and it tells you how many things are in your recycle bin and all sorts of good stuff like that. So definitely worth um, using that. Whether or not you decide to replace the default dashboard, that's up to you. But the code for that is here. I won't demo it because I'm running out of time, but it's as simple as that. If you want to remove the default Umbraco dashboard, you just uh, do that and that will 
you just create a composer and that will delete the uh, default Umbraco dashboard. Sorry, Umbraco. I'm not hating on you or anything like that. Uh, and this is the screen. Just log in and we'll see the dashboard. We'll have a quick sneak preview and we'll move on. There we go. There's the dashboard and it's got good information on that. Right, moving on. I was a bit ambitious with 10 demos. Sorry about this. So back to the slides. That was the dashboard, clean, relevant, links, more. Demo time, gone. Editor notes, so this is another one of my favorite packages and it's by Mark Goodson, so I do have to do this one because he, he taught me a lot and I used to work with him. So what's really good about editor notes is it gives you extra descriptions for your properties in the back office. So it gives you a way, more visual way of uh, doing it. So it's eye-catching, there's different modes, more. That's how you install it. You can search for it on our or on that site. Demo time, pray. Right, so we'll switch back. So let's actually run this site then. So this is editor notes to RNG. So if I uh, open up the terminal, run.net, run again. And by the way, don't uh, be upset or annoyed at yourself if you start nodding off. I understand I was doing it myself at this time yesterday. It was just after lunch, so don't feel guilty about it. Just cover your eyes. Right, we're just going through this. Here we go. So this one's really cool. Um, I'm going to go to the back office straight away. Um, come on, we can do this. We can get through these. So if we log into this, so on the home page, I've added some of these properties, uh, these labels. So here's one, what is a hero? So it just gives you a pop out information about this property. So, um, you know, you might be wondering what a hero is. Um, the next type that you can see is just, it stays there. It doesn't collapse or open out. It's just a bit of information. You can add classes to these to um, make it stand out with different colors and things and style them up. Or there's this one, so the color themes, and it gives you a bit of an explanation about the color theme. Um, so we like, you don't know, water, what does that mean? So it does actually give you a nice looking theme, actually. I didn't realize the default starter kit had themes, but it does, so we're gonna have a look. Ugh. There we go, products page has got like this blue theme. So that is that one, and there's more. Uh, switch back, please, already on it. Contentment, this is one of my favorite uh, Umbraco packages ever. Um, I just love it, and I don't even use half of it. One of the best bits about it, I think, is the data list editor, and that's the one that got added to, I think, Umbraco Hardcore, if I'm not wrong. Property editors, it's great editing experience and developer experience as well. And there's more. Right, that's how you install it if you need the QR code. Demo time. Right, I'll do a quick demo for you. So contentment, um, brain's going to stop now. So run the, run the project. So the good thing about contentment as well, it, it's just so clever in that not only is it a property editor, but it's also a data source editor as well. And um, I wrote an article for Script on how to create an author picker property editor and it uses images, so I'll show it you now. What better time to show it you than during the talk? So I'll, I've got a couple of demos with this, but I'm just gonna just show you the one. So if we go to a blog post, and we have a look at the first blog post in the list, my blog post, we can see we've got this um, author picker. So it's really nice and really easy to create using uh, contentment. And if we just have a quick look at the uh, settings. So if we go into data types and author picker, we had a data source. So I used the C-sharp uh, class to create this uh, data source. It's in the GitHub repo for this whole talk, by the way. So you'll be able to get access to all of this if, if you want to have a play yourself. And then there's this uh, templated list. And all it is, the HTML to render that is just that. 
So you just can customize the actual rendering of these. And um, now I've got a nice looking um, author list picker and that actually works as well. So let's move on again. So back to the slides. Back office themes. This is a good quick one from uh, Kevin Jump. Um, this one, you can just change the theme in the back office. Um, so if you've got editors that don't know the difference between UAT and live, maybe they should only edit on UAT and um, not edit on live, but it looks the same to them. You can actually, as an admin, change the theme of that site um, to be like the dark theme or something like that. So, and you can even create custom themes for it as well. So I'm not going to do the demo for this because we're really running short of time. Al and Bracco Tag Helpers, I had a good demo for this. Uh, but again, running out of time. Uh, this one, and Bracco Tag Helpers, um, with, with .NET Core, you've got these tag helpers. And you can do things like easily inline an SVG. Um, you can do member login or not. Um, just ever so easy. Have a look at the repo um, and see what you think of that. We've got 404 not found manager. I will quickly show you that, and then I've got one more after that. So these will be very quick. So page not found. What I love about this one, two things. One of them is it's my friend Nick who made it. Um, and the other thing is that you don't need any code for doing a 404 page. So I don't know if you know how to do 404 pages in on Braco um, 9 and 10. And if you don't, you don't need to because you've got a really cool uh, package that does it for you. So I'm just going to fire this one up. I say fire this one up, just like slowly load it up because it knows we're waiting. There we go. So what you can do with this, it's all done within the Umbraco tree. So you can just click on a node. You can just right click on a node. So let's say I've got a, if, if in general, on, for this site, you can do it site specific as well. You can have different home nodes. But for this site, if I can just go to manage 404 page, and you can choose it, and then you can just select the 404 page. Can we switch back? Yeah. So you can just right click on, a, um, on any node and manage the 404 page so that any time there's anything not found from this page or below on the tree, it will redirect to this 404 page. So now let's just have a look. We can go slash blah de blah. Yeah, page not found. So last, last demo, another quick one. Um, sorry if I'm just running a few minutes over, but this one is one of my favorite. It's also one of my favorite ever packages. I keep saying it. And it's called Construct, and it's not even there. It's in here. Bear with me a sec. GitHub. Oh, I've got so many repos. Yeah. Right, so if I go in there. So this one is made by Matt Brailsford, and it is an easy way to create UIs in Umbraco, like sections and dashboards and things like that, through code and configuration. It's got a fluid API. Of, is that how you say it, fluid API? Fluent API. So it's, all the code for this demo is, in, is not in there. It's on my Coach v 9 site. But this is the uh, scenario. So I've got my Coach site. I'm doing it in V9. I don't want to bring over the, all the old content from my old site. A lot of it's not relevant anymore. But I still want to serve it. So what I did was I got it all out of the old site into a flat table. My table is here, and it's just got columns. And it's just got some properties. And um, there is just like an HTML property. Now, what I can do with this site, um, I can serve the content from this separate table. So the, these are real posts. So uh, if I go into the back office, I'll show you. So we've got a, a real, um, sorry if I'm sounding flustered. So we've got a real actual, oh, you're a git. You're an absolute git. Don't use password manager. Right, there we go. 
Let me just show you. So it's given me a section called Post Archive because I've configured it to tell it to look at this table. And I've got a collection called Posts. And this would be free because I've got one collection. And I can see all of these posts that are in my uh, content. And I can edit this content. I've got tabs. It looks like Umbraco. Um, I can just go in and I can just uh, type in sorry because I'm going over. Sorry. And I can save that. And it will die on me. Uh, but it's OK, because I will just look at the page anyway, and we'll all go home. So if I go back to the blog section, if I just do slash blog, and then if I paste that in, the page doesn't actually exist in Umbraco, but it's a way for me to serve it as a virtual page. And it's here. Um, it didn't let me save the content, but that's the demo gods for you. So sorry if I ran over, but I hope you like this. Um, switch back, and I'll end it on my. Thank you. So yeah, demo time, thank you. Um, I'm Paul Seal. <laughs> Summary, so many great packages. Try them out. The GitHub repo will be published for you all. I'll share it on Twitter. That's my Twitter QR code. If you want to follow me and get the link, you can do. And this one's Mori Armas as well, who I work for. So thanks, everybody.